to see. So at this point, I think we'll again take some questions if people have them. Uh, Erin, are you there? Uh, yes, if you would like to ask a question, please press star then one at this time. One moment. We do have one question queuing. One moment, please. <clears throat> Our first question comes from Max Nettleman. Your line is open. Hi. My question is multiple wall types in VOP. Is that anywhere in the future uh, for selecting multiple wall types in a in a home? Uh, yes, it's definitely in the future as opposed to the present. Um, now, it is a, a request that, that we get fairly frequently and, um, and it's, it's in our uh, to-do list uh, track system. Uh, not quite sure when we will get to it, but um, but we know that it had, that there's some priority based on that uh, from the questions, the requests that we get. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I think at the moment your best uh, way to handle that is the to use the uh, category called other wall, um, where you can specify sort of a generic wall layer by layer, and so you could uh, perhaps do a uh, area weighted. Uh, U value calculation and then put in that wall type in this way. Um, okay. okay. So, uh, are there other questions? We do have a few more in queue. James Wigmore, your line is open for your question. Hi, I had a quick question about the uh, auto-sizing the, uh, the HVAC, uh, the air conditioner. Uh, are you able to, um, to give you up to define the size? Uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, uh, if you choose the auto size calculation, be able to do a calculation, uh, manual J calculation, and determine what the size is needed to meet the loads of the building. Uh, yeah, and is there any way to see what that, that size is, what uh, what uh, VOPT is, is calculating that size to be? Yes, there is. So VOPT doesn't do the calculation sort of on the input side, but when you run the simulations on the output side, um, it shows up in the right-hand graph. and if I remember, as we as we get to the output uh, side of things, I'll try to I'll try to show that. Thanks very much. The okay. next question. The lower right hand uh, at the bottom of the right hand table of uh, building characteristics on the output screen. Our next question comes from Gary Dicker. Your line is open. Sure, actually it's uh, Barry, but uh, my question goes to uh, duct design as a potential improvement. Uh, I do a fair amount of residential audit work, and particularly uh, among large homes uh, at the upper price, end of the price range in our metro area, we tend to see um, duct systems with inadequate return, and one of the um, retrofit measures that we uh, want to evaluate for some of these high-end homeowners involves fairly expensive addition of uh, additional uh, return. I'm, I'm wondering if there's flexibility in either version 2 or upcoming uh, versions of BOP to be able to address that. When you say additional return, you mean additional duct runs? Yeah, it, it's um, – we are finding that uh, – the duct systems are not designed uh, or implemented in accordance with uh, Manual D. And so um, just to pick on one particular home, we, we got a 6,000-square-foot, uh, $800,000 home where the, the airflow through the returns is at less than 10% of what it ought to be. So, so Barry, uh, either removing obstructions or adding additional returns. Uh, this is Eric Wilson from the BIOP team. 
Um, is this primarily a comfort, a fix for comfort, or are there energy implications here? Both. What are the energy implications? The energy implications are that, um, among other things, we're, we're using uh, more electricity uh, during the summer uh, because we're not able to to cool uh, an upstairs, a master bedroom, uh, because we're so, not able to remove the existing air. So occupants are setting the, the thermostat lower in order to cool off that room that's not getting airflow? No, the issue is that it, unless you're able to displace the existing uh, conditioned air with, with new conditioned air, uh, you're going to have to just keep running that system longer. The issue is is removing the fluid, the the existing air. So the way we're currently modeling is um, we don't model individual rooms. Um, so all the rooms on one floor, say, would be lumped together and assumed to be conditioned to the same temperature. Uh, that is something, you know, modeling rooms to be different temperatures is something we've considered for the future, but it's not a uh, capability in BEOPT currently. And, and yeah, guess, it's, it's less of a room-specific issue than an overall thermal efficiency. Sure. And I, I think, Barry, you know, the, the answer is sort of that BEOPT currently with regard to, to this issue, you know, is assuming that uh, – the duct or the returns are adequately sized, so that's where we are today. Uh, we'll take note of this. Thank you for for pointing this out. You know, as as not just a theoretical thing, but something that you actually see in the field. Uh, and so we'll put a ticket into our track system uh, for potential uh, enhancement of the capabilities that be up to to uh, to address and analyze that sort of thing. Great. And if your your people need further input around that, happy to provide. Very good. Thank you. Great. Thanks. The next question comes from Phil. Your line is open. Hello. Hi. Phil Kerrigan here. Uh, mine's a follow-up question on the uh, auto sizing. And, uh, Scott, I'm not sure if you were going to address this in the output section, but I'm just going to ask you right now. I know I see that in the output it will list what it's what it actually calculates. And so, for example, this example plan that I have shows that uh, BIOP is calculating a 1.44 ton cooling system when I select auto size. Does that mean that you guys are actually entering in a condenser that is at 1.44 tons and, and, and running your calculations with the unit at that specific size? Um, as we all know, you can't purchase one off the shelf, so I think that would have some implications for uh, the results, uh, especially when talking about things like part load performance. Yeah, thanks, Phil. That's a good question. Um, and it's an interesting question because uh, we actually have some new capabilities in VAP version 2 to actually address that, I would say. Um, so at the moment, VAP version 2 is doing the same thing as version 1, which is to say that our simulation is using the sort of continuous auto sized value. Um, we do, for costing purposes, pick the appropriate uh, discrete package that would meet that. So 1.44 tons would become 1.5 tons for costing purposes. Uh, but the simulation at the moment is still running with the 1.44 tons. Now, with version 2, we do our, our sizing uh, a bit different so that we could choose to uh, run the simulations with discrete options if we wanted to. Um, so I think that's a good point. We should consider that, and uh, um, I'll make note of that, and we'll maybe talk with you further about that point. All right. Thank you. And I guess just a quick comment that I think for newer technology air conditioners, the, um, the part load impact of, of uh of uh, not rounding the, the size for the simulation to the nearest half ton would be a pretty negligible impact. Now, it may be the case that for older equipment, it's, it uh, could be more significant, uh, the fact that, that we're currently running the simulation at the, the exact size value rather than the rounded to the nearest half ton. 
So we'll look into that. Um, thanks, Phil. So. Thank you. The next question comes from Omari. Your line is open. Hi, Scott. This is Omari from Stephen Winter. Uh, my question is, is, is with regards to uh, size and data, for example, a space heating system. I'm working on a, on, a, on a passive house which has a very low load, um, less than 10,000 BTU. Um, is there a way that you can do that and be up? Since the minimum um, heating capacity we have here is about 30,000. And Mano J um, predicted higher than actually um, the 9,000. So the auto size will still not be able to come up with that low load. Um, how do you go below 30,000? How do you specify below 30,000? Uh, sorry, I missed it. What what sort of HVAC system will you? If I um, you know build the capacity of a of a heating system that is less than thirty thousand in be up. Is it a heat pump or a furnace? Um, furnace. Furnace. So you're saying that there are furnaces less than thirty kbt per hour that can be purchased on the market? I think it's also, I don't think it's in the industry now. We haven't. We have houses that. Uh, high efficient low load houses which have uh, um, lo loads less than 10,000 BTUs. Um, so we're wondering how would you model that in um, in, in B Uh Yeah, this is something. Why don't we maybe talk this talk about this offline? I mean, we can certainly make additional uh, capacities available here in this drop down if. Uh, to go lower than 30 kbtu. Yeah. Uh, I think the only reason we limited it is because we, you know, looked at what's available on the market and said, sort of, this is what's available. But we can certainly add that if that's the case.